Hello, welcome. It's good to be back. I, uh, I'm feeling a little awkward today. My husband went camping yesterday and he took the car as well. So I haven't left the house uh, in like two days. And I also haven't really talked to anyone in two days. I talked to someone on the phone earlier this morning, but that's it. So uh, yeah, just trying to get my wits about me here. Sammy has decided to wander in because you can hear me talking. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see him today. Probably not, but you can hear him clicking away. He's just come to check things out and now he's leaving again. So I am drinking out of a nice buffalo plaid mug and today I have um, David's Tea Santa Secret. It's really nice and tasty. It is kind of dreary and cold and rainy here so it's going perfect and I'm not really in a Christmassy mood or anything, but I always buy the Santa Secret when it comes out in like during the holidays. And then I kind of like stash it, like I'm afraid to run out, so I don't really drink it all year, even though I really like it. And now I'm realizing that I have a whole bunch, so might as well use some. Um, but yeah, I am doing a terrible intro. My name is Laura, and I'm coming to you from the west coast of uh, British Columbia. I live on a little island and my um, my handle on the rest of the internet is I Heart You. So you can find me uh, as I Heart You on Instagram and that is the name of my Etsy shop as well and on Ravelry I am I Heart You Knits and that's where I'm kind of most active in the world these days. So you can find all that down below in a link tree um, the other thing I wanted to mention quickly is my Halloween Spooky Socks Cal is going on right now. Now I've just realized today that there is another make-along um, using a really similar hashtag and it's way more popular than mine. So um, yeah, that's I feel, I feel like I'm taking their hashtag, but either way, I've already committed to this for this for the month of October. So if you want to knit some spooky socks, uh, you can just tag it with the spooky socks cal 21 hashtag. And yeah, I thought I had done my research ahead of time to make sure that hashtag wasn't being used. But um, there's a really similar one being used. So I guess next year, what I'll do is I'll go back to just using the Halloween socks cal hashtag, which is what I used last Halloween. So Either way, what can you do? But yeah, if you want to knit along on some spooky socks uh, along with me and some other awesome knitters, I would love to see your project. Um, I do have some yarn coming from a dyer who contacted me and they want to send some yarn for prizes. So really looking forward to that coming and I'll show you that when I get it. Um, but this is my entry for the Halloween Spooky Socks Cal and I'm using a Hedgehog Fibers um, sock colorway called Man on the Moon and it is super fun with these like acid greens and grays and then I'm not sure if you can see there but there's like a pop of kind of speckled bright pink and black and um, I decided to go with a purple for the heel and then I have like an acid green yeah it's blowing out but it's really close match for the bright green in here uh, for the toe so yeah I asked you guys about that on Instagram which one you liked better which color you liked better for heels and toes and it was like almost exactly half and half for the purple and the green and then a few people said oh you should do like purple for the heels and green for the toes and uh, so I thought why not Oh, I'm losing some stitches here. Let's uh, let's just fix this up here quickly. There we go. Uh, yeah, so very happy with these. I've been trying to work away on these every couple of days and put in a few rounds so I don't get too far behind. Um, we're just like halfway through the month now, so I should be done this sock, but that's okay because I've been finishing up a lot of other things that I wanted to show you. Um, if you caught last week's episode, I did um, like a rundown of all my hand knit sweaters 
and so I have about three weeks worth of knitting to show you and I've been pretty productive so I'm pretty excited about that I've got some finished objects uh, to show you and talk about so this is the first finished object this is my summer sorrel tea this is a pattern by um, wool and pine and it has this really beautiful slip stitch uh, design that goes down the yoke. This is done in fingering weight. Um, the sorrel pattern, there is a, um, an original sorrel, which I've knit one of those as well. You would have seen that last week if you watched my video with all my hand knit sweaters. And that one is fingering weight with mohair. And then they also have a spring sorrel tee, which is done out of DK. And then this is the summer sorrel out of fingering weight. So it has a really beautiful I-cord edge uh, that just goes directly into the pattern afterwards. And um, once you finish the yoke, then you knit uh, stockinette, like you turn it kind of, and you're working on the inside. And so then you don't have to do any more purling, which is really nice once you get through uh, there's quite a bit of purling on the yoke, but once you get through that, um, then yeah, you can just keep going with knitting. <laughs> so I was playing a little bit of yarn chicken with this, um, but it worked out okay. What I ended up doing, I had two skeins of this yarn, which is Euphoria Knits uh, Frenzy Base, which is their 8515 um, fingering weight base, and the colorway is called Sterling. And so I had two skeins of this, but that base has, I think it's like 430 yards or something like that. It's just a little bit smaller than um, some sock yarns, which are 460. So I was a little concerned I was going to run out of yarn to do the body, um, but it ended up working out okay. What I did is I, once I did a little bit of the body, I went back to the sleeves and just very quickly finished the sleeves. Um, they're just, you know, about an inch of knitting and then some ribbing. So that didn't take very long. So I put those on the needles and then quickly finish those off. And so then I could use all the rest of the yarn that I had for the body. And I ended up just kind of weighing it as I was going along. And when I felt like I was getting close to the bottom, um, like when I felt like I had just enough to do the bottom ribbing that's when I stopped and did the ribbing so I think I might be like one or two rounds short on my ribbing but I just kept on kind of checking and weighing and measuring and I ended up getting almost exactly the length uh, that the pattern called for and it fits really well it's not too cropped as you can see it's got a pretty decent amount of body and I managed to just use two skeins which is all I had you know, I could have bought more, but I wouldn't have used very much of it. So this method worked well for me. So this was knitting, um, I believe it was the third size. You know, I usually knit like about a 40 inch size, something like that. I have a 38 inch bust. And uh, yeah, like I said, I just squeaked by with two skeins. And, you know, if you had a little bit more yardage on your skeins, then it might not be, you know, quite so much of a nail biter for you. But uh, I highly recommend this pattern. It's very beautiful. Um, I've worn it a couple times. I wore it in the video last week and I wore it when I was down going to the post office the other day. And it's very light and comfortable, but it feels, you know, just a little bit more dressed up than say, you know, just your regular t-shirt. So I think this is gonna get a good amount of wear and um, yeah, I'm really happy with it all around. I love Euphoria Knits yarn as well. Um, I've talked about it a lot before and I've actually started a new project with it too. Uh, Euphoria Knits is Janessa. She's out of Texas. And uh, yeah, we have, you know, I have a lot of her yarn. <laughs> I go through like phases with yarn dyers where I buy like a ton of their stuff. And I totally went through a Euphoria Knits phase uh, last year, and I'm still working through a lot of the yarn that I bought. And then the next thing I want to show you is this finished pair of socks. Um, I should have put these on my blockers, but I have another pair of socks on my blockers right now, so you'll just have to bear with me. So these are, um, I called these my camp socks. They're just plain stockinette socks. 
but I actually brought them with me on a camping trip in the springtime when I was um, training for a backpacking trip. I brought the yarn with me and I wound it when I was sitting down by the water uh, looking at the sunset and then I started my socks down there and then I actually finished them at the same campsite uh, on like my last camping trip of the season which was um, I think it was the last week of September probably just after I last podcasted. So I hadn't done a lot of work on these I just kind of picked them up and um, worked on them over the summer and I've just been trying to get old whips out of my life really and uh, you know make room for new knits so I wanted to finish these so I took them out and uh, got some good work on them at home and then brought them with me and finished them uh, when I was camping. So this is another Hedgehog Fibers yarn. This is their Hedgehog Fibers Twist Sock which um, I think I talked about this a lot the last time I showed you, so I won't go into it too much, but I love the Twist Sock. I prefer the Twist Sock over the Hedgehog Fibers original sock. The Twist Sock is a uh, BFL based, Blue Face Lester. Uh, still super wash and everything, um, but it's just, it's a little woolier, it's a little toothier, um, but I just prefer the gauge of this. I prefer the fabric that I get out of this and um, they're really hard wearing as well. So I think I told you this before, but if you don't like the Hedgehog Fibers original sock, I would definitely recommend trying out their twist sock, as long as you don't mind something with just a little bit more bite to it. It's still quite soft, um, but it's not merino, so good to remember that. And did I tell you the colorway? The colorway is called Pinky Swear. So it's this really bright pink with pops of green and a little bit of orange and some white and some black. And I just did my standard uh, vanilla sock recipe, which is a two by two rib for about 20 or 25 rounds. And then I do somewhere between 40 and 50 rounds of stockinette. And then I did a gusset, like a turned heel, slip stitch heel and gusset on these ones. I often do the fish lips kiss heel. That is my other second favorite heel, um, especially if I'm doing a contrast heel. That's the one I'll use. Um, but I, you know, learned how to do the turned heel and gusset first, and I still like to do that sometimes. I find they both, like both of them fit my foot well, both of the styles, so I can just kind of pick and do whichever one I feel like doing. So yeah, another finished pair of socks to go in my little finished projects box behind me there. It's a little cedar box, and I've been keeping my new finished hand knit socks in there for a while, like for the last year or so just because I want to wear out some of the socks that are in my current box of socks. Um, if you want to see what's in my current box of socks, you can check out a video um, from a few months back where I went through all of those. But I just want to wear some of those out and get them, you know, before I start using something new because I know as soon as I get new socks in there, that's what I'll want to wear instead. And um, yeah, I just, I just want to go through some of the ones I already have before I start digging into my new socks. Anyway, so that's another finished object. And then I have a third finished object as well. I've just been finishing up so many whips. It feels great. Uh, these are the ones that are on my blockers and I showed a picture of these on my Instagram the other day. These are my scrappy socks from the scrappy socks knit along that I hosted back in April. And I pulled them out and I think I was somewhere in here on my first sock. Um, like just earlier this week and within about three days I had cranked out and finished the entire um, pair which is just so funny that they just sit for months and months and then all of a sudden you know I just kind of got in the mood to finish some things up and this is something that's been sitting for a while and you know I said this on Instagram I kind of went back and forth with being like thinking that these socks were really awesome and then you know I'd look at them again and I'm like oh they're not very nice you know some of the colors like this is kind of a cooler tone and a lot of the other ones are warmer so I think that might have been what was throwing me off but they're really fun <laughs> so I don't know it's just funny how you start doing that I'd stare at them too long and I was questioning my choices and I thought oh these aren't very nice but they're they're great they're really fun they have a lot of super fun memories in these socks from past projects as well so like this one's long dog yarn um, and dark dimension this is long dog yarn as well in the pop colorway this is a junk yarn colorway 
I can't quite remember what this one's called. It might be Leslie. Uh, this one here is the Fawn and the Fox. This is Yarn Ink. This is Vivid Yarn Studios. This is Midnight Cravings. This is also Long Dog Yarn. I had a mini. Uh, this is another Vivid Yarn Studios. And then this is, I'm pretty sure, one that my friend Rowie dyed. Um, she used to dye under the handle Pirate's Yarn, but she doesn't dye anymore. And so, yeah, these are all projects, like different sock projects or um, other different projects that I've done. And these are the leftovers from them. Um, you can see the shawl that I made with this colorway is right here behind me. So, you know, it's fun to have these memories. And the funny thing about these scrappy socks is, you know, like I said, once I started working on them, they worked up so fast. It's just like self-striping yarn where, you know, you're like, oh, just one more stripe, just one more stripe. And these were kind of the same. Like I was doing eight round repeats of my um, colors and they just they flew they went so fast you know I'd be knitting along and then all of a sudden it would be time to change to a new color so it's funny how that happens um you know versus knitting just stockinette socks in a solid colorway sometimes it feels like it can take a long time to get through the leg or through the foot where these just felt like they flew by once I started getting going on them so I think there are more scrappy socks in my future I think I uh, would like to play around a little bit more with my scraps and try and come up with some more combos because they were really fun to do. Um, I did a different um, different way of weaving in the ends than I normally do. Uh, I'm just going to turn them inside out so you can see. I did the, um, it goes under a couple names, but like the Stephen West from West Knits has the Weave in Stephen tutorial and I'm pretty sure that this is very similar to that. Um, I actually learned this one um, when I took like a Cowichan knitting class, like a Coast Salish knitting class um, with Sylvia Olson, but they're all really similar in how you weave in your ends. So the only thing about it is I did leave some little tails because I do find with this method you can't cut it right up against where you finish weaving in. Um, which is what I would normally do, like that's what I did with my cuff yarn because I wove that in after using my normal method and then the same thing when I um, did the Kitchener on the toe. So um, as long as you don't mind having, you know, these little doodads, these little tails sticking out, then um, this is a really good method in my opinion, but you know, it's not the cleanest method if you're, you know, if you're particular about your socks and um, you know worried about those tails sticking out maybe this isn't the best method for you because I just find with the superwash yarn it's really slippery you could probably get away with cutting it a little closer if you were um, using a non superwash yarn but just for these you know the slippery sock yarn I wanted to make sure that the ends didn't pull out so you know it's definitely a huge time saver though to be able to knit in the ends as you go and um, you know makes the project a lot more bearable uh, than having to weave in all of these ends after you finish you know you're gonna have two ends at every color change so that adds up <laughs> so yeah um, we'll see how these feel on my feet you know the the, they're not going to be on the bottom of my foot, the little tails. They're going to be kind of on the side of my foot because they're right here along the side here. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that feels uh, once I start wearing these. But these are also going to go into my cedar box uh, for later. And so then, um, oh, I have another finished object. I have four finished objects this week. So I like cleared out my whip queue almost are like my whips on Ravelry and almost completely um, I have two more projects one of them that I will show you shortly that I restarted and then another pair of socks and then um, now I have like a nice empty open queue and I've already started adding things to it so my last finished object I'm gonna have to show you this in pieces this is my uh, goldfish memory shawl this is a pattern by uh, Casapinka and I love it. I actually have yarn wound here for another Casapinka shawl that I want to start at some point soon. I haven't started it quite yet, but 
but I just want to kind of show you this in sections. Um, it's called the goldfish memory because you're not doing anything um, in like any particular section for very long. You're always switching to something new. It's three colors and as you can see uh, you just start playing around and um, there is a little bit of lace here and then there are a lot of kind of garter and stockinette um, patterns and then um, there's, I think there's a couple of slip stitch sections and then you finish off with one more lace pattern right at the very end and it is one of those asymmetrical shawls so it is you know an asymmetrical rectangle and it was so fun to have this on the needles the last little while I haven't blocked it yet so it's going to open up a little bit um, once I block it but I already love it and Oh, I just couldn't be happier with it and it was such a fun knit to have on the needles because you know you weren't doing anything for any particular amount of time but there's a good amount of stitches on the needle so I don't know how to explain it it just felt really meditative it wasn't like I was blasting through each section but it was just a really enjoyable knit and I'm very happy with it so I need to block it but I just haven't gotten around to it because it's going to be so big it's going to take up a bunch of room but I think it's going to be a beautiful shawl just to kind of wrap around and wear as like a scarf sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, like it's going to be nice and warm if I wrap it like this. And I could also let the, um, you know, let the long edges hang down a little bit and do that. Or um, it would be great as something worn with like a dress or something as well. So I'm very happy with it. So the um, the three colors I use, I'll just try and show you like the individual colors so you can see. This is the first color. This is a color by Long Dog Yarn. And um, I'm blanking on the name of this. Oh, it's Casada, C-A-S-S-A-T-A, -S -S -A -A, I think. And I've had this in my stash for a while and was looking for a perfect project for it. And then the um, really dark blue is a colorway by Euphoria Knits. And then the uh, medium blue in here is the Fawn and the Fox yarn. And I'm blanking on that colorway as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if you are interested in these colorways, um, you know, the fondants doesn't dye anymore. And, uh, you know, so you, ca you can't really get that one anymore, but you might be able to find it in a Ravelry G stash or something. I could find that information for you. You can leave me a comment down below, or it's going to be in my Ravelry um, page as well. I have all the colorways listed in there. So yeah, another finished object, four finished objects in three weeks. I'm so stoked for that. It feels great <laughs> to have some things finished. I have a new shawl for uh, the winter weather that's coming and I have room in my Ravelry page for a few more whips. I don't like to keep a ton of whips going. You know, they kind of build up and then I get overwhelmed and then I have to knock some back. Um, so speaking of that, this is a whip that's been sitting for a really long time. Um, you may have seen this like once if you've been watching the podcast for a while. I probably pulled it out once or twice and said, I'm going to start working on this again. <laughs> and then I never did. Um, and you know, it's one of those things where I knew there was something wrong with it, but I wasn't quite ready to admit it yet. So I finally pulled it out and admitted that um, I didn't think it was going to be big enough. That's why I was hesitating with it. And so I ended up ripping it out and restarting it. So I'm almost back to where I was on this sweater. This is the Stone Crop sweater by Andrea Mowry. Um, but I'm choosing not to do the baubles. There should be baubles in here. So here. Yeah, I think so. And I'm just skipping the baubles. I'm just doing a purl stitch instead of the baubles because I don't love baubles and I didn't, you know, I already knew this was going to be a big project for me, an all over colorway, color work project. But yeah, I just didn't want to do the baubles. I don't need to justify it. I just didn't want to. <laughs> so like I said, I had started this, I had started this back in um, like March of 2020 and I did some good work on it, but my gauge was a little off and I was doing a smaller size and 
I think I knew that it was going to be too small, so I had been hesitating to continue and hadn't really continued on with it. So I pulled it out a little while ago, maybe like two weeks ago, and I ripped out all my progress, which kind of hurt, but you know, it wasn't too much further. I was maybe an inch further along than this. And I restarted it and I actually went up a needle size and up a um, size in the pattern as well. So like I said, I normally knit like the third size on Andrea Mowry patterns, but I chose to go with the fourth size, which is a 42.5 inch. Um, just because I want that extra space, it's going to be a color work, the color work sweaters, I just don't think it's going to stretch very much to start with. And I didn't want it to be too tight after I put all this work into it. So I restarted it with slightly bigger needles so that my gauge was a bit more correct. It was a bit off. Um, I needed to go up a needle size from the pattern. And then I also went up a size of like of, of sizes in the what do you call it I went up a size <laughs> so uh anyways it's back on the needles I've done some work on it I'm finding the two color color work really nice and enjoyable especially this time of year I have a lot more time to put towards knitting this time of year just because it's um winter now you know fall winter and our weather has changed and we're spending a lot more time inside and it's getting dark earlier so there's just more time kind of in the evenings i'm finding to do um, work on stuff like this so i'm very happy with it i'm using two colors from flock fiber company that's a canadian company and this one is called wavelength and it's just a really beautiful um tonal teal and then this colorway is called Peach Pit, and it is just a really fun coral. And, you know, they don't have the highest contrast for color work, but I really love uh, the look that I'm getting with this. So yeah, Stone Crop Sweater by Andrea Mowry without the baubles, just skipping all those baubles. And um, I hope to you know, I hope to get some work done on this and not have it sitting for another year before I pull it out again. So I'm hoping this will be a good project for the winter time. And then I started one last project, which I want to show you. It is another Andrea Mowry sweater. I've just been obsessed with Andrea Mowry sweaters for the last couple of years. You know, I'm not the only one. She's a super popular designer and I think there's a reason why. And I just wanted to see if there was a picture of this one. Yeah, I'm starting the Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry. This is black and white, um, but this will give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. It's just a color work yoke sweater. And um, the fun thing about this sweater is it is knit with uh, mohair for the color work. So this is a lace weight mohair held double. And this is what I've done so far. I did this in just the last couple days. Um, I'm really excited about it. The mohair has this beautiful halo and it just is making a really lovely fabric. I don't know if I ever would have thought to hold mohair double and use it in color work, but now that I've done it, I'm just like, oh, this is the coolest thing. It's just making a really beautiful fabric. And I think that halo is going to be really nice and it's going to be really cozy on my shoulders as well. So you can see I've just started that first set of color work there and um, just working away. Very happy with it. I think it's going to be beautiful. I did go up a needle size with this one as well, but I chose to do the third size that I normally do. Um, just because this one, I don't mind it being a little bit more fitted. It's going to be more of a fitted sweater, but I did go up a needle size just to make sure that the color work wasn't pulling in too tight. And I'm using Euphoria Knits for this as well. Here is her card, Euphoria Knits. I'll just put it in front of my face so you can see it. And I'm using the Excitement is her lace mohair yarn. And this is the antique lace colorway. So it's just this really nice um, kind of blush pink. It's a little darker of a pink and you can just see all that beautiful halo. And so yeah, I am holding it double. I'm just pulling from the inside and the outside of my ball for this. And then I have this beautiful uh, deep reddish purple color 
which is just a little different from what I normally choose, but I'm trying not to knit all blue sweaters. And so this is her Frenzy base, which is a really beautiful base I've talked about a lot. It's the 85 Superwash Merino, 15% nylon. And the colorway is, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, if it's Nisus or Nisus. Uh, a lot of her colorways are, I think they're like Greek gods. If you know, you can let me know. <laughs> um, and it's just, like I said, this really beautiful uh, dark kind of reddish purple. And really happy with this as well. Um, I love it. I love it. It's going to be great. And so with this one, I'm going to finish this color work up pretty quickly. And then it's just going to be a stockinette sweater. And so then, you know, if I'm craving color work again and sick of the stockinette, I can go back to my stone crop. That's That was my logic there. So yeah, love it. Very fun. I haven't actually pulled this out of my project bag since I worked on it. Um, it might have been last weekend, actually. I don't remember when it was. Um, but now that I'm like seeing it again, I'm excited all over again. And this is in a beautiful bag. This is by Sarah of Rib Creative, but I don't believe she's making the bags anymore. But I just, I love it so much. I had to show you. Um, she took this beautiful lace and stitched it on the one side of the bag. And then it's this really nice, like, um, kind of denim twill fabric. And it has a pink zipper and like a neon pink lining. And it's just, it's an awesome size, actually. It is just a great small sweater size. This is like for comparison, this is my medium drawstring. So you can see it's just a little bit wider. So it's almost like the width of my large bags, but um, not quite as tall. And I actually really like this size. It's a great size. It's nice to have some bags by makers other than you. You know, like uh, I have a lot of my own bags, but it's nice to have bags from other makers because they do things just a little bit different. This is another Rib Creative bag in a similar size. And this is what I have my um, stone crop sweater in. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for projects. Um, yeah, I do want to start some new things. I'd like to start a new pair of self-striping socks, but I want to get some work done on my Halloween ones first. So I think actually I'm going to start um, something Christmassy. I think I have some Christmas yarn from um, Freckled Whimsy that I want to start. And so that will be the next thing that I start. And the next shawl that I'm going to start is another Casa Finca shawl because I enjoyed the last one so much. This is the Breathe and Hope shawl by Casa Finca. Um, I have a black and white printer, so I know this isn't a great photo. Uh, you should look it up if you're interested. So this was something that she started, um, I think it was just around the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, where she wanted to support local yarn shops. So it was a really cool concept where she was selling um, yarn, like she was selling, she wasn't selling. So she had connected with a whole bunch of local yarn shops and then together they were selling kits with this pattern and then uh, the yarn to go with it. And you could go to a variety of different yarn shops online or maybe in person. And um, that was just her way of trying to support local yarn shops during the pandemic and the first lockdown, which is a really cool idea. So I didn't actually you know, purchase this at the time, but I do remember hearing about it. Um, but, I decided to buy this shawl pattern because I just really liked it and you use one solid color and one variegated color. So I am using this really nice deep variegated or not variegated tonal charcoal. That's going to be my solid color. And then this is my um, tonal. Oh my gosh. This is my variegated color. <laughs> And it is, um, this is a Hedgehog Fibers, I believe. Let me just double check. No, it's not. It's a Spun Right Round. So this is a Spun Right Round 8020, and it's Kiss and Tell. I got this from a D-stash from somebody, 
and it's really fun pink with just some pops of um, purple and blue in there as well. And then this is a Euphoria Knits colorway in this dark charcoal. And I have two ball bands here, so I'm not sure which it is. I think it is Etri, E-T-R-I, um, but I might be incorrect on that. But when I get this started, I will put it up on my Ravelry page and I will figure out what the actual colorway is. I'm not the best like sometimes I can remember all my colorways and my patterns and things but sometimes they just you know things happen so yeah hope hope that doesn't bother you too much um but yeah so that's going to be one of the next things I start and uh I'm thinking about starting a scrappy sock project as well like or sorry a, a project out of my scrappy sock yarn maybe a blanket so that might be coming up in the next little bit so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to tell you today. I'm working on stuff for the Etsy shop, but it's all kind of in progress right now. So um, I'm not going to show that to you because it's sort of in a stage where it's not easy to show. But I'm using all Rifle, Rifle Paper Company fabric, so beautiful florals from Rifle Paper Company. And um, a lot of canvas in this update as well, so the main fabrics are canvas. And that's going to be in the shop on Saturday, but for now you should go have a look at the shop because there are still some of the flannel bags that I showed you last week available in the shop. I really love those. I love how they turned out. So definitely go check those out. And then there are also some Halloween bags still in the shop, some spooky project bags. So if you're looking to get um, you know, something, you know, Halloween-y, <laughs> then um, I would recommend checking out the shop. Other than that, the Rifle Paper Company update will be in the shop next Saturday. So October 23rd, there will be new bags in the shop, but there's a lot of stock in the shop right now. So um, go check it out. There's lots of lavender pouches. There are tons of project bags. Uh, go have a look there. And uh, if you're interested in the Rifle Paper Company, then that will be in the shop on the Saturday the 23rd. And then my next update after that is going to be Christmas bags. I know it feels early, but it's going to be uh, the first week of November. So I gotta get those Christmas bags in the shop so that you can get them and time to do your Christmas knitting. Um, also, please keep my shop in mind if you are uh, looking for maybe ideas from, if you have people looking for ideas for the holidays, or like, you know, if you're like me and you have a birthday in December, um, I would love it if you would send people my way to my shop. Um, it would be amazing to have the support. And, you know, we are so quick to go to like Amazon and things like that. Um, at least I am for uh, gifts from people. But if you um, have your eye on something in the shop, it would be great if you were able to, you know, help support me through the holidays. I feel really weird saying that, but it's true. <laughs> so yeah, keep my shop in mind um, if you have people asking for gift ideas. Um, so yeah, I think I'll end that there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me again. And I will see you in a couple weeks with another update. And until then, um, enjoy your time, you know, knitting or whatever you're doing this time of year. And I hope, you know, you're having a nice fall if it's fall or spring if you're in the Southern Hemisphere and just enjoying uh, these changing seasons. So yeah, take care and we'll talk to you again soon.